everybody, and welcome today's, to today's webcast. Today we'll be taking a look at Microsoft Power BI, and we'll really be focusing on uh, some of the enterprise aspects of Microsoft Power BI. We'll start with uh, some brief introductions. Uh, so my name is Amanda Tesco. I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant with Thoroughgood. I've been working for Thoroughgood for a number of years on business intelligence uh, enterprise implementations, really across the Microsoft BI stack and a number of other technologies as well. And I'm joined today uh, by my colleague, Bridget Rock. Bridget uh, is also a consultant with Thoroughgood, and she's going to be helping us out today doing a number of demonstrations for you. Uh, as the host had mentioned, we will be taking questions today through the chat panel, so please feel free to send any questions you might have as we go through the webcast. Uh, you'll want to send them to the host, and they'll relay them to us. Uh, if we do have time to address them uh, during the webcast, we'll certainly do that. If not, we are happy to follow up with people individually, so feel free to send them through, and we'll make sure we get back to you with, with some answers for you. So let's take a look at today's objectives. So first, what we really want to do is demonstrate the Power BI technology suite, so to look at the different components of that, desktop, the web browser version, and mobile, and to help you understand just how those components work together. And then what we really want to do is to focus on some of the enterprise features and some of the considerations uh, that you should make when you're determining if Power BI is right for your organization. So for our agenda today, we'll start out just telling you a little bit about Thoroughgood so you know a bit more about us. Uh, then we'll do a bit of a high-level overview of what the Microsoft Power BI suite actually is. We'll take a bit more of a deeper dive into the desktop and uh, online tools, and we'll do some demos at that point to make sure you're getting a feel for, uh, for what it looks like to actually use those tools. We'll then highlight some of the key enterprise capabilities and do another demonstration on those, and then we'll wrap up with some conclusions. So we'll get started now uh, telling you just a brief bit about Thoroughgood. So I saw the registration list for today. It looks like there are some familiar faces out there, so uh, thank you guys for joining. For those of you who don't know Thoroughgood, we are an independent global professional services firm specializing in business intelligence and analytics uh, solutions. We've been around for about 28 years, and we have a keen focus on our customers. We do operate globally. So we have offices in the U.S., in New York and Philadelphia, uh, in the U.K., in London, and in India and Bangalore. And we typically operate across uh, the consumer goods, pharmaceutical, life sciences, uh, and financial services sectors. All of our uh, consultants at Thoroughgood are recru recruited and trained in the same way to really develop a unique mix of skills that focuses on blending business understanding in the form of industry and functional experience with strong technical aptitude and a deep understanding of analytic tools and techniques as highlighted in the, the intersection of those three circles as you see there. And we do offer a full range of BI and analytic services, so that includes everything from strategy and tool selection, so maybe how Power BI fits within your existing architecture, for example, uh, through to requirements, design, and implementation of actual solutions, as well as training and support. So here I've just included a list of our customers by sector to help you get a sense of the types of companies uh, that we work with to help with their business intelligence and analytics needs. And I should mention that we are an independent consultancy, so what that means is we partner with a number of different technology vendors, and that includes really back-end, front-end, and the analytics-driven technologies. But the one we'll really be focusing on today is Microsoft. Just to give you a little bit of information on our partnership with Microsoft, so we have been a gold partner with Microsoft for over 10 years, and we're certified for data analytics and BI solutions, as well as intelligent systems, uh, so things like SharePoint and cloud-based software. Our partnership really gives us uh, a good bit of interface with the Microsoft development team, so we're able to help them understand their product roadmaps, but also able to input into the direction of the, the products as well. And we were a part of uh, some of the early beta and pre-releases with Power BI that we're showing you today. We're also part of a number of their other programs that I've got listed on here. And if you are interested in working on uh, any of those programs with us, make sure you drop us a note and we'll be happy to follow up with you. All right, so let's dive right into talking about what Power, Bi what Power BI actually is. So when we've been speaking with our customers recently, I would say many have had some questions about like what technically is Power BI. Uh, many customers will be familiar with say the Power Tools add-in for Excel, or they may ask, you know, is Power BI kind of as it was 
previously debuted as part of the Office 365 suite. Um, really what's been going on with Power BI is it's, it's undergone some changes in recent times, and I think it's really become uh, starting to evolve into something that's pretty compelling uh, for a BI offering for most of our customers. Actually, Microsoft uh, announced just, uh, I think, at the end of last month that it's actually hit its 5 million subscriber mark. So we are seeing a lot of customers beginning to adopt it. When we're speaking about Power BI today, what we're referring to is what Microsoft is calling the new existence of Power BI. And this existence is really largely based on components that span both local machines, so that desktop application, as you see on the left hand of the screen there, as well as a cloud-based application of it. What it does is it introduces a locally installed tool uh, that's called Power BI Desktop, which combines the power of Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View to enable users to load and transform data, and then use that to create powerful visualizations and reports, which can be published to a browser, um, where enterprises can share and collaborate on those reports, dashboards, and data sets in the cloud. The new Power BI experience also extends to your mobile devices. And so we'll be taking a look at these three components in more detail and highlighting some of the enterprise aspects in them. I also wanted to just briefly touch on the licensing model for Power BI because we have had a number of people asking some questions about this. So there are two models uh, for licensing going forward. I would say previously there were three, um, so Power BI for Office 365, but that model will, um, will go away. So we'll focus on the two here. One is a free model, and that allows you to install the tools for free. Um, and another is a pro version. That pro version has a monthly licen licensing cost of $10 a month per user. Uh, and there is a free 60-day trial, so you can get a feel for that without having to uh, invest any money in it. We have been asked, can, can our uh, customers mix the free and pro users? And technically, you can. So you can have some users on a free license and some on a pro license. However, any users who are consuming what they're calling pro content does require a pro license. So there is some consideration there on, on how you might make it work with free and pro users. I would say, in general, what we're seeing is most enterprises will require pro licenses and, and pro licenses for the majority of the people who are interacting with, um, with the report. What that pro content includes is reports, dashboards, or data sets that have certain features enabled. Um, so some of those features are direct query, so if you want to query a database directly, uh, if you want data sets that are re refreshed more than frequently, if you want to connect to your on-premise data, if you want to use organizational content packs or group workspaces. And we're going to talk about some of those points a bit more as we get into the webcast. We'll show some demos as well. Um, but it's important to just keep in mind that there are these two different licensing models. And though that free license is really good for getting a feel for the tool and may be useful in some situations, I would say most customers looking to implement this at an enterprise scale are going to require that pro license as it's currently configured. So let's um, dig in a little bit more to that desktop tool that I was talking about. So as I mentioned, the Power BI desktop tool is a standalone authoring tool which is installed on the user's desktop. The desktop tool offers a combined functionality of Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View into a single application. So if any of your users are familiar with those tools, they'll recognize the look and feel of it when, when we get into this demo. I'll take you through at a very high level uh, how Power BI works, and then I'll have Bridget take you through a demo so that you can get a bit more of a real view of it. So in kind of the highest sense, what users do is they connect to data, and they're able to connect from a variety of data sources, so files, databases, cloud sources, et cetera, and that data gets loaded into the tool. Additionally, pro users are able to connect live to databases through direct query, um, and they can do that both with cloud sources and on-premise data sources, which we think is a pretty unique proposition and something that we're seeing a lot of interest from, from our customers. We'll talk more about those things a bit later. Once the data is loaded into that desktop application, the users have the ability to transform the data using uh, the same kind of interface you would use in Power Query, so user-friendly transformations of that data. They then have the ability to model it in the way that they would have been able to model in Power Pivot um, using kind of user-friendly modeling, drag and drop, pretty simple relationships. Once they've got that model to a point that they're happy with it, the users have the ability to build reports on top of that model. 
there are various out-of-the-box chart op options, and you can see, you know, I've listed a number of them here. So you've got like your tree maps and your bubble charts, your masking capability. Um, but something else that's pretty interesting is the ability to use custom visualizations. Um, and so what this is is uh, there are visualizations that are developed by community members using Microsoft's open source platform, and they really offer kind of an endless possibility for custom reporting. Now, there are some things that you would want to consider when adopting this within an enterprise. So, for example, uh, these aren't maintained and managed by Microsoft, so do they meet your security requirements? What are the maintenance considerations? How do you centrally share the files that you need to, to uh, share these within your organization? So there are definitely some things to consider here, um, but it really does extend the functionality beyond just those out-of-the-box chart options, and so it is something I think worth considering. And then lastly, the desktop tool also offers some really good and somewhat advanced capability around analytics. Uh, so for example, there are multiple analytic data sources that users can connect to, um, as well as an R script visual, which is a, a chart type that's pretty interesting. What it essentially allows users to do, so if you have users in your organization who are, say, uh, pretty savvy with the statistical language of R, uh, they can m uh, model their data and transform it in, in a way that they're happy with it, and then run their, their R scripts on top of that modified and prepared uh, data set. They can then leverage the visualization capabilities of Power BI to look at visualizations on top of the outputs of that R script. So some pretty interesting functionality there around the analytics and something that we think will continue to evolve as well. So now, why don't I uh, hand it over to Bridget at this point, and she can take you through a demonstration of Power BI Desktop just to give you a feel for some of those things I just spoke about. Thanks, Amanda. So we are going to jump right over to Power BI Desktop here. And so this is a workbook view. And this tool, the desktop tool, would be used primarily by business analysts, IT personnel, or your business users who are really most familiar with the underlying data. Uh, it is a very user-friendly tool, but you do have to have a good sense of the data that you're using uh, to really take advantage of this kind of blank canvas that you get with the desktop tool. So for those of you who have never seen the Power BI tools before, I'll give just a brief introduction. So we have the blank canvas here, and along the right-hand side, uh, we have a number of panes to quickly build visualizations. So we have the visualization icons, as Amanda alluded to. There are the native visualizations. There's the R script visual to pull in that analytics. And additionally, we have some custom visualizations, uh, which are pulled in from that community visual gallery. Additionally, we can uh, change the formatting in the formatting pane and take a look at our data on the far right-hand side. So I've already pulled some data into this workbook, but if you're opening a new workbook starting from scratch, that would be your first step. So by connect using any of the Power BI native connectors, you can easily pull data into Power BI from a variety of sources. You can use local files, databases, as Amanda mentioned, either uh, live connections or you can pull extracts to store that data locally, uh, as well as some cloud uh, connections, so either Microsoft or non-Microsoft products. So as I mentioned, I already have some data here in this workbook, uh, which I can quickly go into by looking at that data view and look at the queries underneath. Now this would be very familiar to any users on the line that are familiar with Power Query that have used that Excel add-in. Uh, you can actually see the data in the centralized table. You can see the steps you've performed to transform the data, whether that's changing data types, renaming rows, uh, adding calculated measures or calculated columns. So all of that is stored and recorded here in this Power Query equivalent. And you can also see a variety of sources. So along the left-hand side here, we can see that I have five tables in this particular workbook. And this last table, although it looks identical to any of the others, it actually is using that R script connector to pull on the deep analytical power to have some forecasting. Uh, so that way I can compare current data to uh, future data and kind of look at where my company is going and, and how that's projected out through 2017. Additionally, as Amanda touched on, we have this relationship view of Power BI Desktop. So this is really your equivalent to Power Pivot, where you can connect tables and create these relationships to actually build out your model. 
Now, the model that we're looking at is obviously very simplified. We only have a few tables here, but just to demonstrate how quickly it is, how easy it is, and how quickly you can build models, it's just a drag and drop. So uh, it's just a matter of looking at the fields on your tables and, and dragging and dropping to create these connections. Um, there's no code. You don't need to go into that kind of underlying source, but it's all right here in Power BI. So once we have that underlying data, we've made our transformations, we've built out our model, we're actually ready to utilize the visualizations of Power BI Desktop. So I'm going to start with just a bar chart as an example and looking at the forecast. I'm interested in this forecasted sales. This is uh, what I've pulled in with my R connector. And I want to look at this on a quarterly basis. So uh, we're starting now in April 2016, and these, this is the projected forecast out through uh, 2017 as well. So just with a few clicks, I have that visualization, which I'm going to paste now onto another page of the report, where I have some additional vis visualizations already built out. So I can fit this one in here, and you saw that it took only a few clicks to create this visualization. And with just a few more, I can change the formatting. So to match the theme of the rest of my report, I'll want to change that, uh, turn the border on. I can adjust the title and customize that to really uh, make this visualization fit with the others and create a full report that's ready to be shared out. So I've pulled in some data from multiple sources. I've used that R connector. I have uh, some advanced analytics going on. I'm using a custom visualization here, which is an advanced timeline slicer that allows me to zoom in to specific regions of that year. And now I'm ready to share this out with my colleagues. So by selecting Publish, I can save my changes, and Power BI will automatically detect that I'm in a group through my Office 365 account. So I'm currently on a project that's doing some ETL, and so I have the opportunity to either publish this report to my personal workspace or directly to that team site, that group site where uh, all of the members of my team can interact with the report, make changes, and use that. So I could choose to publish this to my workspace, which I've actually already published it up there. And before we switch over to a demo of pa the Power BI service at powerbi.com, I am going to hand it back over to Amanda to give just a little introduction of the service of Power BI. Great. Thank you, Bridget. Um, so I know you guys are uh, probably anxious to see what happens when Bridget presses that publish button, but I think we'll just give you a very quick overview of what hap of this web browser-based uh, Power BI service first. So at a very high level, what can the Power BI service offer? So you would publish information to the service, so reports, data sets, and uh, dashboards. And at the moment, those can come from a few different places. They can come from Power BI Desktop, as Bridget just showed. There is also some new integration with Excel, which allows you uh, to pin parts of uh, Excel workbooks into the Power BI service, and Bridget will show a demo of that in a moment. We also know that with reporting services in SQL Server 2016, that there will be the ability to be able to pin portions of reporting services reports uh, up on PowerBI.com as well, which will be pretty valuable for leveraging some of the investment you might have in some of those more structured reports. You also have the ability to share through this Power BI service, and you can do that in a number of different ways through groups and content packs. We'll go into a little bit more information on some of those a bit later, but it really provides the platform for being able to share these reports and dashboards within your organization. There's also an aspect of this Power BI service that allows personalization. So users are able to create their own dashboards based on the things that interest them from reports that have been shared within their company. There's also an aspect of web-based authoring that you can do right within the browser. So if you want to adjust existing visualizations or if you want to create new ones on the fly, you can do that without having to go back to the Power BI desktop tool. Additionally, the Power BI service is used for analysis. So there are two features in particular that help with this. Uh, Q&A is essentially a natural language uh, querying system. It allows you to type in questions in natural language and has visualizations created to answer those questions. We'll show a demo of that. Quick Insights is another one that's pretty interesting. So what Quick Insights does is runs a, creates a series of charts based off of a data set and allows you to see where relationships might exist in your data. So if you are 
uh, you do have a data set and you're not exactly sure what to do with it, sometimes this is a good way to prompt some thinking or to see where there might be things in your data that you've been missing. So I'll pass it back to Bridget and she will take you through a demonstration of what happens after she presses that publish button and things get shared on that Power BI service browser. Thanks, Amanda. So we'll flip over here to the, uh, this is any uh, internet browser you can access the app.powerbi.com to see that Power BI service and use those features online. So this is the platform that the majority of enterprise users will be interacting with, this online platform. And this is where the collaboration really happens. Now what we're looking at here is the most recent dashboard that I've viewed in my workspace. Uh, but I would like to first back up and kind of show how a workspace, uh, the, the structures underneath a workspace, and there's really three of them. So we have data sets, reports, and dashboards. Now data sets are uh, a little confusing because they're, it's not actually a single source, but it's a single bundle of sources that contain the data. So for example, we can see that we have the sales and profits forecast data set. And so this includes data from my original source as well as from that R script connector. And that's been automatically published here to my workspace at onpowerbi.com uh, when I publish the report. So going into my reports, we can go into the sales and profits forecast report. And so this has that underlying data set and we can see this is the same report that we just saw in the desktop platform. So we can interact with this report. I can filter to the first quarter of 2017, and the other visuals will automatically update to show that selection. So I can interact with my data, get answers very quickly just by looking at this. But additionally, even through the internet browser and the online portion of Power BI, I can choose to edit reports as well. So I can select edit the report. We see the panes that we're very familiar with through Power BI Desktop up here. We can add visualizations, pull on any of the additional data from the data set, uh, or make any changes to the report. Once I make my changes, I can save those, and that will save the new copy of the report uh, to my report list in my workspace. And if I'm working in a group, it will share that saved report uh, with everyone else in my group as well. So these are reports we're very familiar with. They're very similar to what we saw in Power BI Desktop. But the, one of the real main features of the Power BI service are dashboards. So dashboards combine any number of reports and therefore any number of underlying data sets. And they combine a pinned dashboard, or sorry, pinned visualizations to the dashboard. So I can select any visualization in a report and I'm going to choose to pin this one to an existing dashboard that I have that has some other information about profit and sales and orders. And now I can go back to that original dashboard that we saw. We can see that we have a variety of visualizations already here, some information about total profit and sales. And now we can see this visualization that I just pinned from the report that I just published to Power BI. So I can rearrange this, adjust the size, and now this will be available to quickly view as soon as I look at my dashboard and can just take a quick glance at my data. Additionally, I can demonstrate the, this Q&A feature that Amanda just spoke to. So this is a natural query language. So I don't need to know specific words or keywords. I just need to know what's in my data set. So I'm looking for maybe total orders and sales and I want it split out by the subcategory of my data. So just by putting those keywords in, I can see a scatter plot, uh, which is exactly what I'd want to see. And uh, looking at this, I'm also interested, I'm looking for patterns of what has the highest sales, the highest number of orders, uh, but I might want to see that by category. So I can add some, uh, add some notes to this, and I want to color by category. And now it'll break out my three categories that I have of these sales. And I can look at this, I could pin this directly to my dashboard. Or additionally, I can expand these panes on the right-hand side, and I can now make any of the same changes that I could to those visualizations within a report. Uh, I can make those same changes here. So I could now add, uh, maybe we're interested in profit as a size. And now I can really get a very quick glance of what uh, 
products are doing well, by hovering over, I get those actual data values. And this is really a visualization that's very valuable to me, something I'll want to see all the time. So I can, again, pin this to my dashboard, which is the collection of visualizations. And I can drag this into the open space here. So now I have a dashboard. I have a group of visualizations that would be very helpful uh, to just glance at, get a sense of how the company is doing. And this is something that I want to share out to someone else in my company. And that's how we really get into the collaboration and even more of the enterprise features. And to introduce those, I'm going to turn it back to Amanda just to give you a sense of what else we can do with this online tenant. All right. Thank you, Bridget. Um, so hopefully now you guys have a little bit more of a primer of what uh, the Power BI desktop and the online service looks like. Uh, now we'll dive in a little bit to some of the key enterprise considerations. So when speaking to our customers about Power BI, we've really found that there are a number of questions about enterprise readiness of the tool uh, and how it might work within their organization. So what I've listed here are just some of the questions we've seen our customers ask when considering implementing Power BI. What we're going to touch on today are some of the capabilities that help address those questions. I should note that you know, these capabilities are really evolving pretty rapidly, and though we'll touch on some of the key aspects today, how you use these capabilities might be a bit nuanced really based on your existing architecture and your enterprise's BI goals. So we are happy to follow up individually with you if you have some specific questions about these, but we did want to touch on some of these aspects a bit. So the first one uh, on here is about the enterprise gateway, and we have had a few questions come through on where the data is stored and how it gets accessed. This enterprise gateway we think is a pretty interesting um, capability of Power BI. What it allows you to do is to connect to your on-premise data while still allowing all of the sharing and collaboration to happen through that Power BI service in that browser-based cloud approach. Uh, and you can connect to the data sources either live or through schedule refreshes. It's available for data sources uh, such as analysis services. So if you're using analysis services as your semantic layer, for example, on-premise, you could have a, the gateway connect to that data source. Um, it is uh, running on your user's browser and then connecting to that data source on-premise. And the data transfer between Power BI and the gateway is being secured through the Azure service bus. What that bus does is really creates a secure channel between Power BI and your on-premise server through an outbound connection to the gateway. So that means that an inbound connection isn't required to be open on your on, in your on-premises firewall. This capability really gives companies the ability to leverage that browser, that browser cloud-based experience of Power BI while keeping their data securely on-premise. And we've seen a lot of interest from customers in that hybrid approach of how they make the on-prem and cloud-based aspects work together. Another aspect that we've uh, been discussing a bit in the, with our enterprise customers is really how do you control access of these dashboards and reports once they're created? Um, Power BI really encourages self-service and empowering the users, uh, but there, is, there are aspects of it that you will want to keep controlled you can control the access to those elements through a few different ways. So you can share it with just individuals by sending to individuals in your network. You can share it within groups, and those groups can be either created in uh, Power BI, uh, the web-based version of it itself, or they can also be Office 365 groups. You can also share through content packs, which I'm going to touch on in a bit more detail on the next slide, um, or publish through the web, which is a much more kind of public way to share the data. I won't go through each kind of intersection of this matrix below, but depending on the way in which you choose to share it, users will have different levels of access. So they can view and interact with it, or they might be able to edit it. Um, and it is kind of based on the scenario, um, each individual scenario, and what it is that you're looking to achieve. As I mentioned, content packs uh, and, and organizational content packs in particular are uh, an interesting way to share the information at an enterprise level. What content packs do is allow you to essentially bundle up a dashboard, a report, and a data set, and then share that to specific groups. Um, so it makes it pretty easy for people to have access um, in a way that you, you designate. Those content packs are read-only, which means only the creator of the workbook um, can edit it. Uh, however, other users can access it, create copies of it, and personalize their versions of it. And we'll show you a little bit of an example of this. 
uh, in the demo that uh, Bridget will do in a moment. Another area that there's a lot of question around is security and authentication, and there are really a number of avenues that we could go down in discussing this. Again, it will be pretty specific based on the data sources you're connecting to and your existing architecture, but I pulled out a few key points here that I think are worth noting. Um, so for data sources in which role-level security is used, so where there are user roles that restrict the access to the data or restrict which data they can see, um, that security level will, pers will persist when you're using the enterprise gateway or when you're connecting live to the source. So that's good. That means uh, users will have different views of the data based on the access that they have. For data sources that don't have role-level security supported, so uh, maybe your Excel flat files or uh, you might have a relational database that doesn't have security on it, the way it works is that the original author's uh, connection credentials are used to determine the data access. And then the only way to control who sees that data is by controlling who sees that report or who has access to that data set. So at that point, it's being uh, managed at an object level uh, rather than at a data level. So it's definitely an important consideration when thinking about how you spread this within your enterprise and how you ensure that the right people have, the ac have access to the right thing. I will make one point on Active Directory integration. So um, you, there is integration with Active Directory. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, the Power BI service, the cloud-based aspect of it, uses Azure Active Directory. Um, if you are connecting to on-premise data sources, you can pass your credentials to your on-premise Active Directory. In most instances, that will be pretty seamless. Um, but there are some instances where you might have to ensure that your Active Directory on-premise and your Azure Active Directory are synced, so that is something that you may want to think about uh, when considering how you pass credentials from the browser to an on-premise data source. And as I mentioned, there are a number, these things are continuing to evolve, and there are a number of different nuances based on the specific data sources. So if you do have specific questions, definitely reach out. We're more than happy to, to talk to you guys in more detail about uh, what your organization's specific needs are around it. Another topic is really how Power BI integrates with other tools, and in particular, the other aspects of the Microsoft Power BI suite. We have seen tighter integration with Excel in these last releases, uh, and Bridget will show you a demonstration of how you can start to incorporate Excel content into your Power BI dashboards. There's also a new capability to be able to analyze data in Excel from data sets that are published to the Power BI service, uh, which we will show as well. We also know that with reporting services uh, in SQL Server 2016, there will be the ability to pin some aspects of that to Power BI as well, as I mentioned earlier. So I think the integration there is getting tighter and more robust, uh, and we expect to see some continued development on that front. And lastly, we have a lot of people ask about mobile delivery. Um, so there is a pretty good story around mobile, actually, with Power BI. Uh, it can be accessed either via a mobile app or through the browser. Uh, the experience is very similar to PowerBI.com, um, but it's obviously been optimized for touch, touch screen and device use. Something uh, that is a bit refreshing is that it is available on iPad, iPhone, Android, and Windows devices. Uh, all of those platforms are being progressed at on slightly different time frames with slightly different releases, but there is active development on all of them, um, and so that it's good to know that it can be used across them. Um, there's also some interesting stories around offline data. So you do have the ability to set your data re to refresh automatically when you're connected online uh, so that when you are offline, you've got the most recent view of the data. And through some uh, use of caching, you can have some access to that data without an Internet connection. But there are some limitations there, um, such as a 250 megabyte size limit on that. Um, but the mobile story is, is evolving and is pretty interesting. And so with that, I think uh, I'll pass it back to Bridget one last time for her to take you through demonstrations of some of those enterprise features that we touched on. Thanks. So I will try to go through and hit on all of these enterprise features and really show you how they work in action uh, with this Power BI service. So the first uh, feature that I want to point out is this Excel pivot table. So you may have noticed this when we first looked at the dashboard. Uh, but this is data that we're particularly interested in, and it might be data that's not fully captured in uh, the data set that I have through Power BI. So I'm going to jump over to the Excel workbook where this data actually is. 
And so we, I've pulled in the average duration and order count from that data that I have from Power BI. And this is data that as a sales manager, I'm probably uh, monitoring very closely and have targets that are probably constantly changing be between demands and order counts and uh, our efficiencies. And they might be something that change either daily or weekly uh, that isn't necessarily brought into our full database structure. So what I can do is I can make a change here. So say our target for low priority orders has been changed to just four days. Uh, and this is something that I now want to share out with my regional managers and everyone else on my team that we've made this change. We need to make an adjustment and look at this. So I can go into my PIN manager and it will automatically pick up that I've shared this order priority chart onto the profit sales and orders dashboard that we were looking at. So I've made a change and I do just want to update that change. And closing out from of Power BI, sorry, of Excel and going back to Power BI, we can see that without even refreshing this page, this change has already been implemented. So the last update is now today. Our target for low priority orders is now four days. Uh, and we have this average duration that we need to work on. It's, it's something that uh, needs to be focused on by our regional managers. So I have this dashboard with that information, and I'm now going to utilize a content pack to share this out. So I'll create a new content pack. I'll share this with uh, one of my regional managers, Nick. And I'll call this the sales overview. So he already has his own uh, region-specific information that he looks at with Power BI. Uh, but I want to share the, the sales overview information. So this is uh, company-wide data for profit and sales. Additionally, I could include a, a company image or logo, uh, which is very useful when you have many people publishing different content packs and you want to be able to quickly scan through and see which content packs are relevant to you. So if this is uh, an IT published one, the IT could have a specific logo, so that way anyone looking for that content pack could quickly scan all of the organizational content packs and pull out the data that's most relevant to them. So I'd like to share this dashboard, the Profit Sales and Orders dashboard, and you can see that by selecting that, the two reports and two data sets that make up this dashboard are automatically selected. So the underlying data is automatically published through. Now I can publish this organizational content pack and this will now be available for uh, Nick since I shared it with him or if I had shared it with my whole organization, I could see that, uh, anyone could see that in the organizational library. So I'm now going to kind of jump over and look at Power BI service from Nick's perspective. So this is a different Power BI online account, and this is now Nick's perspective. He has some East regional data that he's looking at, the individual states and sales and sales quotas for his region. But he can use this get data feature to pull data in directly to Power BI online instead of having to publish the data with a report. You can go into my organization's content pack library we can see this sales overview content pack that I just published from my account uh, just a minute ago. So we can read the description, confirm that this is the data that he wants, and connect to that data correctly. Now we have a single dashboard, two reports and two data sets that were uh, immediately loaded into my workbook, and I can view these and take a look at that data. But additionally, there are some changes that I could make to this information. There are a few things that I can do with a data set that has been shared through a content pack. So I can either analyze it in Excel, which is one of the options if I look at the data set here, which uses that enterprise feature uh, that Amanda just spoke to and really uh, uses that integration between Power BI and Excel. So by analyzing in Excel, that data set would be available uh, the same way you would view a tabular model in Excel. I can also choose to personalize this data set. So selecting that, this creates my own personal copy of the content pack that I can now edit, make changes to, uh, as Nick being the East Regional Manager, uh, I can uh, add some uh, Eastern data to those uh, overall dashboards, that way I can make those comparisons. 
So I can save this content pack, and now I can always go back to that get data option, and I can always add uh, any information that I want to, but I can get back to that original. So there's no worries of making changes that I can't undo or not being able to get back to this original data. So now I can make changes to this dashboard, as I said, uh, drag the tiles around to make them in the, the most productive way for me to see from uh, my perspective as a regional manager. And now taking this on the road, I can look at this dashboard from, uh, we'll look at the native power, the native Power BI app for an iPad. So looking at an iPad, you're going to sign in with those same credentials that we just used on PowerBI.com through an internet browser. And so I'm using my same credentials, I'll sign in, and immediately I see the same dashboards that we saw on PowerBI.com. So we have the regional dashboard, that profit, sales, and, over, and orders dashboard. And we can also look at those reports. And again, these are very similar to those same reports that you saw both online uh, in your internet browser and in the desktop report. Now you can't make edits directly through the native mobile app, but you can select a visualization and see what's being filtered. So that way you can really understand the data that you're looking at. You can see if a specific visualization or if the report is filtering data down to a specific dimension, and that way you can understand what you're looking at and get the answers that you need. Returning to the dashboards, we can go into the East Regional Dashboard, and as Nick, as this regional manager, I'm looking at this, and I notice this visualization in the upper right-hand corner uh, is clearly concerned to me. So we have uh, this profit coming through, and it's well below the line that's the target. So I notice this visualization, and I might be on the road, but I can use the annotate and share feature to make a comment. So I could make the comment that I don't think this visualization includes the sales from March because uh, these numbers don't look right to me. I need to see that updated data uh, as I'm on the road and I need to see that immediately. So I could make this note and then I could use the share functionality within the application. And I could just send an email directly to someone in the office who has access to either the desktop report or the Power BI service on an internet browser. So I could send that email, and then back from the report, I could swipe down, and we could see that the report's loading, and then immediately I could get that updated data. So as quickly as we saw the Excel visualization pinned to the dashboard, uh, you see changes to a dashboard just as quickly when you are able to connect to and refresh that data with the Power, with the Power BI native application for any of your mobile devices. So those are just some of the enterprise features. Um, I hope you have a good understanding of some of those capabilities and collaborative abilities with Power BI. And I'll now turn it back to Amanda just to wrap up and give a few final points about the Power BI suite. Great. Thank you, Bridget. So just a quick overview. So what we covered today was looking at both the, the desktop application, the web-based browser, and the mobile app, hopefully to give you a sense of what Power BI can offer and alluding to some of the aspects that you may consider when implementing it within your enterprise. As I mentioned, I think a number of customers have uh, had some questions in how it might work with their existing architecture or their BI goals. And so if you are considering if Power BI is right for you, uh, feel free to reach out to me or to Bridget. We've had many kind of quick conversations with some customers or potential customers about um, how it might work in their landscape, and we'd be happy uh, to engage with you on you know, how you might implement it. So definitely feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. You can reach us at our contact information that we've got listed on the screen there. And we'll make sure we get the slides out to you as well so that you have our information handy. Uh, just a bit more information, if you are looking for some deeper dives into some of the Power BI functionality, we do have a web series that we just published to our website that covers those topics there, our integration, custom visuals, and mobile. Um, so feel free to use the URL on the screen to get a little bit more information about some of those topics. And lastly, at Thoroughgood, we do host a number of educational marketing events across a range of BI tools and topics. I've listed the next three events we're doing here in case they're of interest to you. Um, we do have one coming up. 
building a data-driven organization that's going to be run uh, by one of Thurgood's directors, Julia Honigsberger, which I think is going to be a very interesting event that might be of interest to people on this call. Also, I'll note the Microsoft SQL Server event that we're running in just a couple weeks' time. Uh, so please feel free to go onto our events site and, and register for any future events that you think might be of interest or valuable to you. So that's our presentation for the day. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either me or Bridget, um, and we will get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for attending today, and we hope to see you guys at another event in the future.